Hello, welcome back to Ken O'Connor Racing. Uh, what we're going to do in this video, this is a 2002 Suzuki RM250 and I'm just going to real quick show you how to do the power valve installation on it. We've taken everything apart, inspected it. Uh, looks good. Some parts here are discontinued. Uh, so you got to be careful you don't lose anything. It's a big deal. One of them is going to be uh, that piece right there. This one is discontinued. And uh, that flapper valve, well not flapper, but the power valve itself, actually that is sold as an assembly. That costs anywhere from 200 to 250 bucks. So the stuff's expensive, make sure you don't lose anything. And we'll get going, I'll show you how we do this. Alright, the first step is to get this valve together correctly. And what we have is, if you look at this plate, you have a hole on top to the left, one on the bottom to the right. These two sliders, the notch is going to face up. Pin is facing to the outside, both of them the same way. Center piece, get the small chamfer facing up on top, and that notch right there. All of that facing up on top. So get that far, and then uh, we'll show you the next step. Okay, once you get this far, the next step is take this arm right here. Sorry, I don't have a cameraman, so I'm kind of fumbling all over this by myself, but just take this arm with these facing forward. Slide them into here. Just like that. Then we can go ahead and slide the whole valve assembly right down the throat of the cylinder. Just like that for now. Out of the mass array of bolts, they've got uh, strewn all over the bench for this valve here. Uh, the plate that we talked about, the two holes, there's only two two allen heads in here, uh, five by eight threads, and that's what we're going to use to retain that plate. I like to use just a little bit of blue Loctite on these because they are, they are allen heads. You're going to be able to get some, uh, get some torque on them and, and get a grip on it getting it out, but just uh, get those two bolts seated in there. Now, here's, one of the, uh, here's one of the return springs for this power valve, and you can see one end is kind of close to the wind on it, and the other end sticks out farther. Uh, that piece is going to go right in here with the close end of the coil wind getting stuck into the hole in the cylinder. There's another hole in this arm right here, and that's where the uh, tall part of that spring, this piece right here, is going to go. So just put it in this way, get everything lined up, and I'll answer the phone. All right, that's where we're at with that spring in there. And, you know, it's kind of loose, but don't, I wouldn't sweat it too much for right now. Here's the next piece that's going in. And just take the two dowels, make sure they're in front, and just slide that right into here. Drop it in, and then get it to hook up on the inner part of this valve. And yeah, you're going to have to pull stuff around, but... Just like that. What the whole goal is, is get the hole that's in this part of the mechanism to line up with this hole and then check your spring, make sure everything's still hooked up. Next piece is the actuating arm and we just send this through the side of the cylinder. And get it right through everything here, don't worry about the rotation of it. Important part is you want to get it through everything, send it into the other side of the cylinder get something like this. Next step is to bolt all of this together. You just take this little allen head, turn the shaft until it lines up with the hole in the arm. And again, I like to put a little bit of blue on this and tighten it up. All right, the next step is to get your spacer over the shaft on the inside, and then this lines up with the fork of that shaft. Uh. This piece goes in over that spring and you have to make sure that this engages the tongue on that spring. What we're going to do here is retain this mechanism, the whole shaft mechanism, with this piece right here. It's the 8 millimeter and the, uh, the plate. Okay, very close to being in the home stretch. Uh, these are the plates for the uh, sub-exhaust ports 
or block offs, whatever you want to call them. These you have to put in the right spot. You have a left and a right. And keep in mind, anything, and I hate saying that word because there's always exceptions, but I haven't found one. Anything that's labeled left and right on a motorcycle or an ATV is always, if you're sitting on it, this is going to, and the front is in this direction, this is the left, and this is the right. So if that's the case, here's my cylinder. This is the left, this is the right, this is the left valve, that's the right valve. So now that we know our left from our right, this is the right side of the cylinder, that's the right valve, there's a pin in that hole, yeah. and there's a hole in that valve, that pin has to go into that slot. Just like that. Next step is take one of these bushings. We have two of these. And just throw it over that. Then you have your caps. These are the retainers. And these are ambidextrous. These don't matter where they go. I'm going to throw some oil, wipe it on, and uh, get this cap on, and then put the screws in. That's what our right side looks like. I'm just going to flip it over and do the exact same thing to the left side. And it should look like that when you get all done. Okay, last step, and this is important. This is the preload for this power valve. It's in a neutral position right now, so watch this valve. See how this doesn't want to come back? That's what happens when I put a little preload on it. Sucks it right back. That's about a quarter of a turn, and as I actuate this rod, it's dual stage, opens up the flapper in the middle, and then opens up the secondary exhaust ports let it go and it springs right back what you don't want to do is is over tighten this I'm going to leave it about right there what will happen if you do you know, I'm only going to do this just over a quarter turn what will happen is if you over tighten that uh, the valves won't open and it's not going to have any top end uh, so basically that's uh, you know next step is just tighten these these two bolts up to keep everything locked up and that's basically the procedure for setting the power valve on the Suzuki RM250, this is, and again, this is a 2002. Thanks for watching. GentleKindOfRacing.com.